Good evening aspirants. Welcome to Daily News Analysis by Shankar AS Academy. Today's date is 11th November 2023. Displayed here are the list of topics we are going to see today. Now before we get into the discussion, I have got an announcement. Pre-storming test series of Shankar AS Academy. The batch 3 of pre-storming test series is going to begin on 16th November 2023. The first test will happen on 22nd November 2023. Other details regarding the announcement are given in the description. You can go through it. Now let us get into the discussion. Look at this article. It covers the most important challenge of the recent times. That is the issue of crop residue burning or stubble burning. This is primarily a socio-environmental issue which is affecting the air quality of North India. So in this context, let us quickly go through what is stubble burning, issues related to it and various steps taken by government in our usual main sensor writing approach. So this is the question. Examine the issues related to stubble burning and list out the measures to prevent this. This question can be asked in GS paper 3 under the syllabus Conservation, Environmental Pollution, Degradation, Environmental Impact Assessment. The only keyword in the question is examine. So we are expected to present a clarity about various perspective of this issue. Let us start with the introduction. The intro can be a simple one, just explaining the phenomenon. See, stubble burning is a post-harvest practice primarily used to clear the fields of paddy crop residue by burning them. This is commonly practiced in Punjab, Haryana and western part of Uttar Pradesh. This method is used to remove the waste of summer crop that is rice and make the field ready for winter crop that is wheat. Recently, there is increasing air pollution in New Delhi and surrounding areas. Stubble burning is one of the important contributor to this pollution. In this way, you can link the intro with the body of the answer. Now coming to the body part, it can be divided into two sections. Firstly, we are going to discuss about the issues related to stubble burning. And secondly, we are going to see about the measures taken by government to prevent the stubble burning. Let us start with the issues. First is air pollution. Generally, stubble burning is a significant source of gaseous pollutants such as carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide, nitrogen oxides, methane and particulate matter. These pollutants cause serious damage to human health and environment and also to agricultural practices. Secondly, loss of soil fertility. The heat released from stubble burning gets penetrated into the soil. So this will cause increase in soil erosion loss of useful microbes in soil and also loss of soil moisture. So this will lead to soil degradation and loss of soil fertility. For example, the heat from stubble burning penetrates to 1 cm into soil. So this will increase the temperature to around 400 degrees Celsius. The next important issue is current account deficit. Generally, stubble burning leads to depletion of various nutrients in soil like nitrogen, phosphorus, sulfur and potassium. These nutrients are essential to the soil health and crop growth. The depletion of these nutrients will demand more fertilizers in next cropping cycle. So more fertilizers have to be imported in order to compensate this loss of nutrients. For example, Indian subsidy bills amount to 2.25 lakh crores in 2022. So this increase in import bills will in turn increase our current account deficit. The next important issue is global warming. Stubble burning also releases harmful greenhouse gases that contribute to pollution and climate change. Next is impact on human health. There have been several health effects caused by air pollution from stubble burning such as skin irritation, cardiovascular problems and respiratory problems. So these are important issues associated with stubble burning. Now let us see the steps taken by government to prevent stubble burning. Central government has introduced a scheme called Promotion of Agricultural Mechanization for Institute Management of Crop Residue. This scheme is implemented in the states of Punjab, Haryana, Uttar Pradesh and Delhi. According to the scheme, farmers are given financial assistance for the purchase of machinery to deal with management of crop residue. Moreover, the state government is also taking steps to reduce the burning of stubble. Next is PUSA decomposer. It is developed by Indian Agricultural Research Institute and it is a bioenzyme which can decompose the crop residue. 
So Pusa will decompose the stubble within 20 to 25 days and turn the stubble into manure thus improving the soil quality. Next is pelletization. Paddy straw when dried and transformed into pellets became an alternate fuel source. When mixed with coal, these pellets can be used in thermal power plants and industries thus saving our coal usage and lowering carbon emissions. Next is Happy Cedar Machine. The government is providing various incentives to the farmers to use this machine. Happy Cedar is a tractor mounted machine. It can be used to cut and lift the rice straw which is left after the cultivation. So this is the body part of the answer. Now let us see the conclusion. Stubble burning is a socio environmental issue which deals with livelihoods of farmers and life of citizens at the same time. The combination of legislative, technological and behavioral change is needed to eradicate this issue. So this is all about the discussion. Here we have seen the various issues associated with stubble burning and what are the measures taken to prevent it. Now let us move to the next topic. Take a look at this news article. According to Directorate of Public Health and Preventive Medicine, Tamil Nadu has crossed 95% of overall immunization coverage. So in this news article discussion, let us understand about Universal Immunization Program. See the immunization program in India was launched in 1978 under the name of Expanded Program of Immunization. This is carried out by Ministry of Health and Family Welfare. Later in 1985, the program was modified as Universal Immunization Program that is UIP. This program is aimed to prevent mortality in children and pregnant women by providing vaccination against 12 vaccine preventable diseases. But the increase in immunization coverage was slower than expected. For example, there was just 1% increase in immunization between 2009 and 2013. So in order to increase the immunization coverage, Mission Indra Dhanush was implemented in 2015. The aim was to increase the immunization coverage to 90%. Under this scheme also, the vaccine was provided for 12 vaccine preventable diseases. Among these 12 vaccine preventable diseases, the vaccines for 9 diseases were given in national level. The diseases include diphtheria, pertussis, tetanus, polio, measles, rubella, hepatitis B, meningitis and pneumonia. The vaccination for other 3 diseases that is rotavirus diarrhea, pneumonococcal pneumonia and Japanese encephalitis were distributed at regional levels that is only in few parts of the country. So the vaccine for the 9 diseases were issued throughout the country and the vaccine for these 3 diseases were given only in affected areas. So these 12 vaccines comprise the Mission Indra Dhanush scheme. In 2017, Intensified Mission Indra Dhanush was launched to give a greater focus on urban areas. Then the Mission Indra Dhanush was upgraded and finally, in August 2023, Mission Indra Dhanush 5.0 was launched and its aim is to eradicate measles and rubella by 2023. So this is all about the discussion. Now let us move to the next topic. Look at this news article. The index of industrial production for September month has fallen from 10.3% to 5.8%. In this context, let us understand a few facts about index of industrial production. It is one of the prime indicators of economic development. It is nothing but a composite indicator that measures short term changes in volume of production in a basket of industrial products. This is done for a given period with respect to a chosen base period. Know that index of industrial production is published by National Statistical Office and it is released on a monthly basis. The base year for IAP is 2011-12. There is also an another index called Index of 8 Core Industries. It is published by Office of Economic Advisor under Ministry of Commerce and Industry. The 8 core industries were Coal, Crude Oil, Natural Gas, Petroleum Refinery Products, Fertilizers, Steel, Cement and Electricity. These 8 core industries form 40% of Index of Industrial Production. So as we saw earlier, Index of Industrial Production is compiled and published by National Statistical Office. Until 2019, this index was released by Central Statistical Office. Now that from 2019, 
the Central Statistical Office and National Sample Survey Office are merged to form National Statistical Office, NSO. So at present, NSO functions under Ministry of Statistics and Program Implementation. NSO acts as a nodal agency for planned development of statistical system in the country. So this is all about the discussion. Now let us move to the next topic. Look at this news article. World's first vaccine for chicken gunya was approved in US. It was developed in Europe and it was named as x -Chick. Know that it was approved for people of age 18 and above who are at the risk of exposure. So this is the crux of the news article. In our discussion, let us see some basic facts about chikungunya virus. Chikungunya is a mosquito-borne viral disease. It is an RNA virus that is spread by the bite of Aedes aegypti and Aedes albopictus mosquitoes. These are the same mosquitoes that transmit dengue virus. The first major outbreak of chikungunya virus was reported from Tanzania in 1952. Since then, it was identified in nearly 40 countries in Asia, Africa, Europe and America. Now let us see how it spreads. Chikungunya is primarily spread by a bite of Aedes mosquito. Humans are major source or reservoir of chikungunya virus. Therefore, mosquito usually transmits a disease by biting an infected person and then biting someone else. In this way, chikungunya is usually spread among the people. Know that this disease is not contagious. It means an infected person cannot spread the infection directly to other persons, but it is spread only through the bite of mosquitoes. The transmission cycle of chikungunya is displayed here. Have a look at it. Now coming to the symptoms of this disease. Usually the symptoms begin 4 to 8 days after a mosquito bite and the most common symptom is onset of fever accompanied by joint pain. The other symptoms include muscle pain, headache, nausea, fatigue and rashes. Various tests like enzyme linked immunosorbent assays that is ELISA test can be used to confirm the presence of this disease. The world's first vaccine for chikungunya is only recently approved in US but currently there are no vaccines at mass level. So this is all about the discussion. Now let us move to the next topic. Look at this news article. It mentions about Vibrant Village Program and Indo-Tibetan Border Police Force. So in our discussion we are going to see about these two things. First let us take up Vibrant Village Program. It is a centrally sponsored scheme announced in the Union Budget 2023. It is introduced for development of village along border areas. Its aim is to improve the quality of life living in the identified border villages. It will cover the border areas of Himachal Pradesh, Uttarkhand, Arunachal Pradesh, Sikkim and Union Territory of Ladakh. The action plans for this program will be created by district administration with the help of Gram Panchayats. Note that there is a similar scheme called Border Area Development Program which will be implemented separately. Now coming to the objectives of the scheme. It promotes social entrepreneurship, empowerment of youth and women through skill development. Next it leverages the tourism for the development of these villages. It also ensures the development of sustainable agro-businesses on the concept of one village, one product. It is done through community-based organizations, cooperatives and NGOs. The focus area for the scheme will be road connectivity, drinking water, electricity through solar and wind energy, mobile and internet connectivity, health care infrastructure, etc. So this is all about Vibrant Village Program. Now let us see about Indoor Tibetan Border Police. It is one of the Central Armed Police Forces of India. It is a specialized mountain force and it was created in 1962 during Indochina War. ITBP was initially raised under CRPF Act, but in 1992 Parliament enacted a separate act for ITBP. Including ITBP, there were seven Central Armed Police Forces. They were Assam Rifles, Border Security Force, Central Industrial Security Force, Central Reserve Police Force, Indo-Tibetan Border Police, National Security Guards, Shastra Seema Bal. So these were seven Central Armed Police Forces and they do not come under the control of army. They function under the Ministry of Home Affairs. So this is all about this discussion. Now we have come to the prelims practice question discussion. Look at the first question. 
it is about chikungunya virus look at the first statement it is a dna virus which spreads through aedes aegypti mosquito this is partially incorrect because it is a rna virus look at the second statement it is one of the neglected tropical disease yes this statement is correct the third statement says it is contagious in nature this is incorrect because chikungunya is not contagious so the correct option is a only one moving on to the second question it is about vibrant villages program the concept is to improve the living condition of people living close to line of actual control exclusively this statement is incorrect because this program aims to comprehensively develop the villages along the northern border not just along the line of actual control look at the second statement the program focuses on improving the social and financial infrastructure yes this statement is correct the third statement it is based on the idea of competitive federalism yes this statement is also correct so only the first statement is incorrect the question asks which of the statements are incorrect so the correct answer is option a only one moving on to the third question consider the following diseases how many of the diseases mentioned above are covered under universal immunization program japanese encephalitis and rubella are covered under uip malaria is not covered under uip so the correct answer is option b only two with this we have come to the end of the discussion if you like the video please share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to shankar is youtube channel i want you to inform that news analysis video for next three days will not be published due to deepavali holidays thank you